Restore the murals of the Pharaoh Queen Hatshepsut in the 1 to 4 player game Cartouche. One game takes about 20 to 80 minutes, with the first part of this video covering the 2 to 4 player game and the solo mode will be explained towards the end. There's handy links in the description for you to jump to below. The player who scores the most points from story cards, achievements, and leftover tokens is the winner. To set up, place the achievement board in the center of all players, picking the side when playing with 2 or 3 to 4 players respectively. Shuffle the achievement cards and place three face up in the slots on the achievement board. For your first game, it is recommended that players use the cards marked with a star, returning the remaining achievement cards to the box. Place the scarab tokens, colored tokens, cartouche tiles, and black tiles in a supply in the center of the table. Shuffle the story cards together and randomly remove a number of cards back to the box according to this chart. Add the animal tokens to the bag. Each player then chooses a color and takes the corresponding components. A mural board where all players choose the same side, either A or B, one reference card, and six onks in their color, placing them on the corresponding spaces of their mural board. Shuffle the starting story cards and deal one face up above each player's board, returning the rest to the box. The player who recently walked like an Egyptian takes the first player marker to start the game. Cartouche is a competitive tile laying game played out over 10 rounds. At the start of a round, story cards are dealt face up and animal tiles are drawn from the bag according to the number of players playing. Each round has three phases, draft, place, and score. During the draft phase, starting with the first player and going clockwise, each player drafts either a story card or animal tile from the center of the table. When taking a story card, place it face up above the mural board. Each player is limited to a maximum of four uncompleted story cards. So if drafting another when there's already four, the player must immediately discard one to make room. When drafting an animal tile, take and place them beside the mural board. This is called the player's reserve. The draft phase ends once all players have drafted a combination of two items, meaning two story cards or animal tiles, or one of each. Place the undrafted cards in a discard pile beside the deck, and place the animal tiles in a discard pile. They aren't returned to the bag. After that, the place phase begins. All players simultaneously place animal tiles from the reserve on their mural board. Tiles can be placed in any order, but there can only be one animal tile left in the reserve. All other tiles must be placed somewhere on the mural board. The only exception is that the player can have any number of cartouche tiles in the reserve between rounds. Also note that animal tiles may never be discarded from the reserve or mural board. When placing an animal tile, each tile must either be placed adjacent to a reed or adjacent to an already placed tile of any type. Touching at the corner does not count as adjacent. Tiles may not overhang the board or overlap other tiles. They can also be freely flipped and rotated during placement, covering animal icons on the board if the player wishes. After placing, tiles can't be moved for the rest of the game. Animal tiles are made up of one or more animal types, with there being a total of four different types. Each type matches animal icons found on the mural board. Whenever an animal tile is placed adjacent to one or more matching animal icons, gain one matching story token per match. So for example, the cat is adjacent to two red cat icons, gaining the player two red cat tokens. Place the tokens in the reserve. If a tile is adjacent on one or more sides next to an icon, it still only gives one story token. Story tokens are primarily used to complete story cards, but they can also be traded for bonuses at any time. They can exchange two story tokens for either one scarab token or a one by one cartouche tile. Scarab tokens count as a wild story token that can be used to complete story and achievement cards. While cartouche tiles are special tiles that are earned from exchanging story tokens or completing achievements. Whenever a cartouche tile is earned, it is placed in the player's reserve and placed just like animal tiles during the place phase, but they do not collect any story tokens. However, they may be counted as any animal tile when completing river stories and achievements. After all players have finished placing, the round moves on to the scoring phase. During the scoring phase, all players complete any of their story cards or achievements that they can in any order. Story cards come in three types, token stories, chamber stories, and river stories. To complete a token story, there must be the exact number and type of story tokens in the player's supply. Return them to complete the card. Remember, scarab tokens can be used as a wild for any story tokens. To complete a chamber story card, the player looks at the created enclosed areas of empty spaces. These form a chamber. Chambers are considered enclosed if it is bordered on all sides by animal tiles, cartouche tiles, black tiles, or the border of the board. Chambers can be any size and corners do not need to be filled to enclose a chamber. To fulfill the card, the chamber must contain the exact number and type of icons within it. No extra icons may be inside of a chamber. 
Some cards may require multiple chambers to complete it. Chambers are still considered separate if they touch at a corner. To complete a river story card, the mural board must have a contiguous group of matching animal tiles, all in one color that is adjacent to all of its depicted icons. Each river story card shows which animal tile must be used to make the river, as well as which animal icons it must touch. A river can be any length, including one tile, or shape, and may touch additional icons that are not shown on the card. Covered icons or icons that touch a river at a corner do not count as adjacent. Most river stories will specify which color is required to complete it, while some will allow any one color. Remember, cartouche tiles may be treated as tiles of any color when completing each river. Some chamber and river story cards show a black tile behind one or more animal icons. When the story is completed, immediately cover the indicated icons in the chamber or the adjacent river just scored with black tiles from the supply. If there are multiple icons to choose from, the player chooses which to cover. Once the requirements of the story card have been met, move it to the corresponding slot on the right side of the board, displaying it to show the point values. The player can also score the seven achievements on the board if they meet the requirements. Four achievements will be in every game and correspond to completing a certain number of story cards, while three are drawn at random during setup that are a little more difficult to complete. In the starting game, the three achievements are to create a single chamber with any eight animal icons, spend two story tokens of each type, and connect opposite corners of the mural board with a river. If a player meets a condition during the scoring phase, they remove one of their onks on the side of their mural board and places it in the first available reward space with the highest value. If two or more players score them at the same time, they place their onks at the same space. Otherwise, on future rounds, the onk is placed in the next available reward space. A player can score a single achievement only once. Then they receive the bonus from the space where their onk was. Like gaining three 1x1 one one cartouche tokens from the supply and placing them in the reserve, taking a 2x2 two two cartouche tile from the supply and placing it in your reserve, and collecting a scarab token, collecting two scarab tokens, pulling three random tiles from the bag, choosing one to place in the reserve and place the other two in the tile discard pile, or taking any bonus they've already taken again. For example, if the player already used the first onk to take the two scarab tokens, they could later use this bonus to take two more. Tiles that are added to a player's reserve during the scoring phase may not be placed until the next round, but the limit of one animal tile only applies at the end of the place phase, so they can have more. The game ends after 10 rounds when there are no more story cards to draw. At the end of the final round, each player places any remaining tiles in the reserve and then scores any stories or achievements they complete. If any player takes more tiles during this phase, those tiles may also be placed. If players complete any achievements in this final phase, they must always place their onks on the last reward space, even if others are empty. Once all players are done, each player adds up their final scores. Add the points at the top of every completed story card to the side of the mural board. Uncompleted stories are worth no points. Add the points printed on every reward space where they placed onks. For every two tokens remaining in the reserve, score one point. Tiles left in the reserve at the end of the game are worth no points. The player with the most points is the winner. In case of a tie, the player who completed the most story cards wins. If still tied, whoever has the prettiest board wins. Now in the solo mode, the museum you work for is testing a new mural reconstruction software. It's up to you to prove your skills against the AI so you can keep your job. Otherwise, it will replace you, and you'll join the cartouche as another relic of the past. The setup is the same as a two-player game, but with the following exceptions. Remove story cards from the deck until there are 20 cards remaining. Set up two mural boards, one for yourself and one for your AI opponent. Deal out starting cards to yourself, but not to the AI. Find the solo reference card and place it next to your board. The phases of the game are the same as a multiplayer game. During the draft phase, deal out three animal tiles and two story cards, then take any two tiles, any two story cards, or one tile and one story card. Instead of discarding the remaining items, place any remaining story cards in your opponent's completed area next to the board. If there are multiple story cards of the same type, move them down and stack them in order left to right. Then place any remaining tiles above the achievement board. Divide the tiles by animal. Placing tiles with only snake or cat animals above the first achievement card. Then placing tiles with only human or bird animals above the second achievement card. And finally, placing tiles with two different animals above the third achievement card. During the place phase, place your tiles from the reserve as normal. Do not place any tiles on your opponent's board. During the scoring phase, before scoring your own stories and achievements, determine whether your opponent completes one or more achievements. If your opponent has three stories of the required type, river, chamber, or token, they score this achievement and place any one of their onks in the next available reward space. 
Then they discard the three leftmost story cards of that type. Your opponent can only score each of these achievements once per game. Now if your opponent has five story cards of a type that they have already scored an achievement for, they score the achievement and place any one of their onks in the next available reward space. Then they discard their five leftmost story cards of that type. Your opponent can only score this achievement once per game. If there are five or more tiles above any achievement, your opponent scores the achievement and places any one of their onks in the next available reward space. Then discard any five tiles above the card. Your opponent can score each of these achievements up to twice per game. If any achievement is scored twice, discard any tiles that would be placed above it for the rest of the game. Your opponent does not receive onk bonuses when scoring achievements. Once you've finished scoring your opponent, score your own stories and achievements. Your onk may never share a reward space with your opponent. If you score an achievement in the same phase as your opponent, your onk is always placed in the lower value space. Your opponent is treated as scoring it first. If your opponent has two onks on an achievement, you may not score that achievement or place any onks there. At the end of the game, you score as normal. Your opponent scores each reward space they occupy on the achievement board and each of their undiscarded story cards. If you have more points than your opponent, you win. In the case of a tie, play again, but better. <laughs> That's it. Now you're ready to get playing. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to help out the channel, tap the like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to not miss out on future videos. Until next time, stay geeky. Keep gaming.